Hi, and here I am back with another episode in our Alta Labs full network setup series. Now, in this episode four, we're going to be installing this, which is the AP6 Pro Outdoor Wireless Access Point from, of course, Alta Labs. So here we have the access point, fairly heavy, solid built, very big heat sink on the back, as you can see here and all around here. And we have the mounting bracket, which is there at the back already on the device. And there is a wall mount bracket which fits on top of this as well. However, I'm going to be mounting it temporarily being, by the way, to a pole which I have in my back garden. So I'll be mounting it to the pole temporarily and doing a temporary wiring to the connection here, which has the one gigabit RJ45 network connection under this grommet here. So what we'll do is take a quick look at the access point a bit close up. And then what we'll do is I'll go outside and connect it up temporarily. So let's take a close up at this in detail, go through the quick specs of it as well. What we'll do then is adopt it into the Alta Labs local network controller. And here we are with the Alta Labs AP6 Pro outdoor wireless access point. It's a solidly built, I um, believe this is actually metal at the back, and then this is ABS plastic at the front. Now it features an omnidirectional antenna, which goes all around in a circle, if you don't know, but most of you probably do. So at the front, we have the Alta Labs logo with the usual A symbol with the uh, brackets around it. Then we have a spot here, which is the LED. There's no LED, I believe, in the middle. It's just actually uh, printed on with silver impregnated ink there, like the Alta logo. And this features just an LED dot at the back. It features a solid metal heat sink all the way around. And also the bracket would act as a heat sink as well. So it's pole mounted with grooves at the top and the bottom here and also at the sides to grip on to the pole should you wish to mount it that way or of course horizontally as well. Now there is a metal bracket that just goes on there if should you want to mount it to a wall and then the small metal bracket which is a plate and it fits over there and screws into either side there with the four screws so you can mount it to the wall. However, with the bracket off, you can mount it to a pole like so. For the input, this is a PoE Plus, so it requires PoE Plus, and this has a waterproof grommet and seal over it. So if we unscrew this, you will see we have the cap, which is threaded. Then we have another cover, which actually provides a rubber grommet inside and then inside the actual slot there is where the RJ45 port is. And that's quite deep inside the hole there. And you just plug the cable into there. So the grommet has a cover over it. And then inside there's a rubber grommet, which pulls apart quite easily. And it has two dots to line up either side. So you would thread the cable through there, put the other cover on, then the grommet and then what you would do is put the grommet inside the cap and then tighten this up until it grips closely and makes a waterproof connection. So as I've said this features omnidirectional and mesh connectivity. It also features UltraPass multi-password technology. The dimensions for this is 210 by 150 by 90 millimeters which equates to 8.3 by 5.9 by 3.5 inches. The weight for this is 1.9 pounds, which is equates to 0.9 kilograms. The top cover, which is this side, is made of polycarbonate and the back side or the bottom is made of milled aluminium. The wall mount material is galvanized steel, which is just a small 
flat plate which I said screws into either side of this access point if you're mounting it to a wall. It is IP68 weatherproof rated. The network interface is Ethernet as I've said and it's also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and it features a one gigabit Ethernet port which requires PoE plus. There's also a factory reset button on there and as you can see it's just here which you just press and hold as necessary. The LED which is the spot on the front there can be changed to blue or white and it's powered by PoE plus or you can have a 48 volt 0.5 amp PoE adapter which is optional of course. The supported voltage range is 42.5 up to 57 volts DC and the power consumption is 25 watts maximum with the typical range being between 7 and 15 watts and that's at 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The maximum transmit power on the 2.4 gigahertz is 23 dBm and for the 5 gigahertz it is 26 dBm. The throughput rate for 2.4 gigahertz is up to 573 megabits per second and the 5 gigahertz can be up to 5.8 gigabits per second and the operating temperature this is as low as minus 40 degrees celsius up to 70 degrees celsius which equates to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit so it should certainly cover this British weather that we have. So that's basically the specs for the Ultralabs AP6 Pro outdoor access point. So what I'm going to do next is get it temporarily mounted to the pole as I've been saying in, throughout this video and then what we'll do is I'll take you to the computer screen and we'll get it adopted into uh, Ultralabs network on the local controller which is the Alter Labs Alter Control. So here I am outside and as you can see I've mounted the Alter Labs AP6 Pro outdoor wireless access point to a pole in my garden and temporarily clip the cable via electrical tape down the pole and this runs just along the ground here all the way along goes through the wall into my home where it's then routed through cable trunking into my network cabinet. So here we are in the Ultralabs dashboard and we're currently in the network tab as you can see on the screen and you'll see that we have the new AP appeared in the list of devices alongside Route 10 and the S8 PoE. So what we need to do now that I've uh, powered on the device by plugging it into one of the PoE Plus ports on the S8 PoE switch, what we'll do is click Setup. And then we just wait a moment for it to adopt itself into the network controller. Now, as it was still showing in this status and it was like that for a while as disconnected, I decided to remove the access point by clicking the Delete button then what I did was unplugged it from the PoE port on the switch, then plugged it back in, waited a few moments, and it's now appearing online. And as you can see, the status there a moment ago was showing as connected. And now we have an update for the firmware. So for some reason, it didn't detect the access point properly. However, just restarting it, removing it from the controller, connecting it back into the switch again and powering it back on of course seemed to resolve the issue so it might have just been a glitch there so now as you will see we've got no name against it and then what we'll do is update the firmware so we'll click the little arrow which is in the black circle there so we'll update from version 2.0 r to the latest version i will just click for update device once I've clicked the arrow it's asking me if I want to do a scheduled firmware update later or right now of course I'm going to do it right now so I'll click right now and then wait for the firmware to update and I'll be back to the video shortly now as you will see we've got the update which is done and we're on version 2.2e 
for the Outdoor Pro Wireless Access Point. As you can see, we've also got the data graph, although there's no data flowing to it at the moment, but it just shows that it's active and connected to our network. And as you'll see, we've got also a Wi-Fi channel there, which is channel 100. However, we will be changing this. So what we'll do first is go and tweak the settings. So first we'll change the name. So we'll click on the name here where it says no name and call it AP6 Pro Outdoor. So that's successfully renamed our device. So what we'll do is click on the icon for the AP6 Pro Outdoor here. And then for the Wi-Fi, what we'll do is set up the Wi-Fi channels so that they're not automatic, but static ones. So for the two gigahertz, what we'll do is change this to, for example, channel 10 and set the bandwidth from auto to 20 megahertz. And for the five gigahertz, we'll change the channel. We'll go up to channel 140 and change the bandwidth to 40 megahertz. And then what we'll do is click on advanced and change the two gigahertz TX power to high. And also for the five gigahertz power, again, we'll change that to high so that we get uh, as best signal as we can. So then once we've done that, we'll click save. Now it's just moved the AP6 Pro to the top of the list here because it's sorting them in alphabetical order. So now that we've applied those settings, as I've said, I'm not going to bother doing the scans at the moment, but you can do it if you so wish. So we'll close this window and then what we'll do, we need to set up our wireless networks. So to do this, we click on settings at the top and then this will take us straight in to the sub tab, which is Wi-Fi. So as you'll see, we've got no Wi-Fi found. So what we'll do is click add new and then in the Wi-Fi name box, we'll type in our name of our first SSID. I'll be creating two, I'll be creating separate ones. One for the 2.4 gigahertz and one for the five gigahertz. So I'll call this SSID name temporarily as EW2. And then for the Wi-Fi security, we'll leave this selected as password, which is the default option. And then what we can do under the password section here, we can click show more. And as you will see, there's different network types. We have standard, which will give you a typical network with fewer than 100 Wi-Fi devices. We also have large network optimized for hundreds to thousands of Wi-Fi devices. IoT, so it's restricted to internet and local incoming connections only. Um, we also have internet, which is restricted to the internet only. So this is what I will be selecting, but you could also select guest, so restricted to internet and IoT devices only. So what we'll do to select internet is here, you'll see we've got standard, so it's selected by standard as default. And this is what it will select the type of network as. So I'm gonna change this to internet only, click in the password box and then create a password and then scroll down and for the site you'll see we've got home base which is our only site we've got created and which also at the top here in the right it tells you which site you're actually in so as you'll see down below we've got also colors so it's the black which is all access points so we'll leave that as default as they've all got black icons against them in our network devices menu here at the top so we'll just click on advanced settings and you'll see we've got the default network, which is VLAN 1, which is default. And then we've got a notes box here. So you could actually type notes in there if you want to. So for the bands, what I'm doing is, as I've said, create two separate networks. So as they're selected as both 2.4 and 5, we'll select this as 2 gigahertz. Scroll down and leave every setting as it is and just click save. Then scroll back to the top and click back. And you'll see it's now taken us back to the list of Wi-Fi networks and we've got the Wi-Fi network EW2 created. So I'm going to create the second one for the five gigahertz. So again, we click add new, SSID, give it a name. In this case, it's EW5, meaning five gigahertz. Again, we'll select password, create a password, but we'll change the network again to internet only. So we'll type the password in. Again, scroll down, advanced settings, and we'll select the band as 5 gigahertz and scroll down and click save. Go to the top and again, click back. 
and here you'll now see we've got our two Wi-Fi networks created. So what we'll do is go back to network. So as you'll see, we've got AP6 Pro Outdoor now, and we've got the channel numbers as 140 and 10, which we selected, if you recall, in this menu here, we set the channel numbers at channel 10, bandwidth 20, and for five gigahertz, channel 140, bandwidth 40. So we just close that. And what I'll do is just test it to make sure the access points are being broadcast and see if I can connect to it. So what I've done is brought up my mobile phone on screen, as you will see here. And if we, for example, select tools and settings and then go into Wi-Fi, you'll see that I'm successfully connected to the EW5 network, which is the one we just created in the Alter Labs controller. So if we click on this, you'll see it's connected at five gigahertz. And if we go into the I button, you'll see that I'm connected at 78 megabits per second, which is good. So I'm actually at home and I'm about 12 to 15 feet away from the access point. And the signal I can confirm is being broadcast through solid brick walls. So I would think that that signal being indoors and connecting to it outdoors is actually a good signal strength. So we'll just close this now and disconnect from the phone and go back to the Alter Labs network controller. So you'll now see here, we've got the broadcast channels. So you can also see that there's one device connected to it and the data rate is also showing the graph now here. So that's how easy it is to add an access point, namely the AP6 Pro Outdoor Access Point to the Alter Labs network controller. So hope you liked this video, hope you found it useful, and in future videos we'll carry on and do more things with Alter Labs. So keep a lookout for upcoming videos. In between those I'll obviously be doing other videos as well, so I'll try and mix it up a bit. So I hope you like this series. Keep watching, keep a lookout for further videos. Thank you and bye for now.